evening, everyone. We're going to get started in a couple minutes, but I just wanted to say as you're coming in and settling down, thank you so much for making time tonight to come and see the hard work that our students have done. So two to three minutes, and we're going to get the ball rolling. When we, um, when we start to go out for our gallery walk later, I wanted to call your attention to some of the posters that are up around the walls here that you can also take some time to review. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The flag is usually here, so we'll pledge over here. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lisa Kaminsky. I'm the director of curriculum here at Westport Community Schools. And I just want to take a minute to give a shout out to Ms. Tetzloff and Mr. Pont, the eighth grade civics teachers who have organized this whole thing with the eighth grade students this year. So can we give them a quick round of applause before we start? <clears throat> and so just a little bit of background. The Department of Ed requires that all eighth graders in Massachusetts take civics. And as part of that civics class, they have to do a community action project. And earlier in the year, Ms. Tetzloff and Mr. Pont reached out to Dr. Fors, and this project came to be. So they've been working on it, and as you know, the goal was to have this event in February, and then, you know, Mother Nature kind of got in the way. So here we are tonight, in late March, and before the kids get started, I just wanted to invite Attorney Nancy Stanton Cross up. She's the chair of the school committee. She's gonna say a couple words. And then later on in the program, you'll hear from Dr. Fors. Good evening. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Lisa. Um, a lot of this effort goes through our teachers um, and our coordinator and the principals and vice principals. This is a wonderful thing and we're gonna start doing this and we're gonna do it more and more and more so that folks out there can come to town meetings. So they say, you know, you bake a cake, you get the ingredients. And the ingredients are all the boards and departments in Westport, school committee, fire department, police department, street department, they all come in before a board called the finance committee. And they're a board that is appointed by our town moderator. And they examine the finances of the town and they explore what the department requests are. And they ask a multitude of questions. And they, you know, tell you, you know, usually people want to add to their department and they tell you what the town has for budget and what they can and can't do. But it's important for each department to advocate for a budget. So as the chair of your school committee for years, as well as my other fellow school committee members that are here, Gloria Cabral, Evan Gendro, um, We've advocated for the school budget. That's our job, is to advocate for the school budget. And we do that tirelessly throughout the entire budget season. And we're constantly asking for, for more money so that we can do more programming for our children, uh, so that we can have more staff to support the staff that we have in here. So it's a big part of what the town uh, meeting ultimately comes to, because then it's time to bake the cake. And the cake is the budget. And once you put it in the oven and you set the timer, it's baked. So if you're not participating with the process of the departments for making requests, which is fine, you've got to come to town meeting because once the cake and the bell rings, the cake is baked and you get what you get and there's no changes that you can make. And what we found with this civics piece was is that people want to say something and they have questions but they don't feel like they're 
all, this, all these chairs are filled at town meeting, and it's a little intimidating. It's very intimidating for anybody, and I'm a lawyer, and I still, and when I get in front of people, it, it, at first you still have to get into the role of things. So we're here, and, and these kids have been great to understand the process and help us have kind of like a dry run. This is what town meeting is. We have our moderator here, Steve Fors, who's going to describe some of the things at town meeting and how it goes. It's a very, um, it's a very organized process. There's ways that you can make a motion. Um, and if you make a mistake, he helps you out. It, it, it's not something that you need to feel so nervous about. And that's what we're trying to do is take the nerves out of the cake being in the oven so that you're in the backyard and your buzzer doesn't go off and you're not there. We want you present on May 7th. It's important. It's important to your kids that are in this school. It's important to the community. You pay taxes here. You pay for all of these departments. It's important to you know where your tax money to go goes. And everybody complains, and I hear it, you know, oh, why is it this and why is it that? Come to town meeting and ask your questions and get your answers. It's your tax dollars. If you don't ask, then you have nobody to blame but yourself because you have to ask. It's your money. You want to know where your money goes at the end of the week. You want to know where your tax dollars are going. That's why this, this process is important. That's why every kid that's sitting here, eventually you're going to be able to register to vote. You need to have a voice. Your voice is your vote. You can't sit and complain on Monday morning that they didn't put your player in the game. You have to be part of the game. That means you have to register to vote, and that's what's important. We have voting registrations out there. There are some people in this crowd that aren't even registered to vote. To vote at town meeting, to put your hand up, to vote for your tax dollars, you have to be registered to vote. It's a very painless process, very simple, signing your name on a paper. So I'm asking you, if you haven't registered to vote, to vote. And once you do, talk to people. Talk to the people that you're at the bus station with. Talk to people that when you go to PTO meetings or games. Are you registered to vote? Are you registered to vote? Because the more people that advocate for what you want, the more you get. So before the cake is cooked, get registered to vote. May 7th is town meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Attorney Stanton Cross. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Tetzloff, who is gonna announce the first speakers. Hello, and welcome, welcome and thank you to the eighth graders, their families, and the townspeople of Westport for attending tonight's eighth grade civics presentation. The, the opening words of the Constitution, we the people, is referring to all the citizens of the United States of America. It is a reminder that the government gets all of its power from the people of our nation. Hello, um, so this is about democracy, the, uh, about how um, ancient Athens did it. So in seventh grade, students learned, or us, about the ancient Athenian democracy and the ancient Roman Republic. The ancient, Greek, the ancient Greeks were the first to create a democracy. The word democracy comes from, from two Greek words that translate to people rule. Democracy is the idea that the citizens of a country should take action, should take active role in the government. The Athenian citizens took part in assembly where they debated and voted on issues for their city state. This image shows shards of pottery that were used as voters ballots in ancient Greece. They also used a show of hands to vote. Tonight at this showcase, you can expect um, and take a look at what you may expect today. All right, what is federalism? We have learned that the idea of federalism is built into our constitution, which, which is the written plan for our nation's government. Uh, does anyone know what federalism is? This guy. I'll come bring it to you. What's up, brother? Thank you, baby. 
very much. Good evening. Federalism, and please, you can correct me if I'm wrong over here. Mm -hmm. Boy, this is a lot of pressure. Um, federalism is a form of government whereby power is shared between the federal government and the state government. And if I want to get into this more of a, in depth, I would suggest that the civil war, among many things that was being fought, was to determine the primacy of the federal government, which was established with the victory of the Union in 1865. Thank you. Thank yes, you. that was right. So you can see national government is the kind of bigger circle. Our national government is based in Washington, D.C. and runs the whole nation, all 50 states. State government being the second largest. Uh, there are 50 of them, each state having their own constitutions or written plan for government. And the smallest being local governments. They break down into cities and towns. Hello, I have a small question for you. What is civics? Well, in connection to federalism, it is the state government of Massachusetts that puts out the framework or standards for education that our teachers follow. During our eighth grade year in social studies class, we learn the United States and Massachusetts government and civic life. Civics is the study of the rights and responsibilities of citizens. Please take a moment and read these words said by a founding father, Thomas Jefferson. Participating is how citizens engage in their community. Civic engagement includes volunteering, donating, participating in political campaigns, running for political office, or by voting in elections. Within each level of government, or there's three branches of government, and the three branches are legislative, executive, and judicial. The authority of the government is separated into different roles. This idea was inspired by the Enlightenment philosopher Montesquieu. So the US federal government, or national government, is based in our nation's capital, Washington, DC. Westport is a part of Massachusetts' 9th Congressional District in the House of Representatives and is represented by Bill Keating. The state senator elected in 2012 is Elizabeth Warren. The junior senator is Ed Markey, elected in 2013. Where we have people to represent us in the, leg we have people rep to represent us in the legislative branch, also known as Congress. Um, does anyone know what uh, building building does Congress work in? Anyone? <laughs> Capitol building, yeah, there you go. In our state government in Boston, Michael Rod Rodericks, <laughs> we, have, we have Michael Rodericks, who is Assistant Majority Leader in the State Senate in the 1st Bristol and Plymouth Districts, which include Westport, Fall River, Freetown, Rochester, Somerset, and Swansea. And pa Paul Schmidt, State Representative for the 8th Bristol District, is who is chair of the Joint Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Agriculture. Both Senator Rodericks plus Representative Schmidt are both Westport residents. Continuing our learning, Senator Michael Rodericks. Senator Michael Rodericks will be at Westport Middle High School on Friday, April 26 at 12.15 p.m. to speak with our MS and HS student councils and our grade eight students on 
civic responsibilities. Getting even closer to home, our Westport Town Government includes two branches of government. The voters at town meeting acts as the legislative branch. The executive branch includes the select board, town administrator, the health planning, and assessor departments. The town relies on state and federal courts. Sue for Westport Town Government. We've conducted six live interviews with the following members of Westport and Massachusetts government. <clears throat> Town Administrator James Hartnett, Chief Administrative Officer, appointed by Select Board three year and has a three-year contract. Day he has day-to-day -day operations, supports Select Board, skill to ask questions, and his job changes on a daily basis. Mr. Hartnett, happens to be a Westport resident. However, we have learned that appointed positions do not need to be filled by a resident of Westport. Elected positions must be filled by Westport residents. It manages daily activity of town government. Examples, fallen trees, blocking a road. He needs the contract, a contract for the highway department to take care of the issue. Uh, he prepares town meeting and needs a budget. Prior to the annual town meeting, the town administrator helps prepare the budget and get it, gets it approved by the finance committee, figure out where the money will be spent. Hello, my name is Jay, and we're talking about Karen Rouse. So we met with her earlier this year at a Google Meet, uh, which we were talking about earlier. Um, she's a group of nine town residents who give advice regarding money matters, including where and how much to spend. Westport is physically conservative and has implemented level services budgets for the past decade. Um, so they make recommendations about the uh, town budget, and they meet with the select board and the school committee throughout the whole entire year. And uh, Karen Rouse, who is on the chair of the committee, is a volunteer. This is an example of a civic engagement. And Karen has been a part of the finance committee for eight total years. Before this presentation, we interviewed Ms. Kristen Simpson, the town clerk, and we gathered all the information she shared with us and put it into this slide. Here's some cool information she shared with us. First, she is a, she is a town clerk and is an elected position, as is the assistant town clerk, Kara Vieira. She keeps vital records such as property deeds and birth and marriage certificates. Residents are in and out of the office throughout the day, and customer service skills are needed for this job. The town clerk issues nomination papers for our candidates running for a position in town elections. And these nomination papers need 50 signatures before before you can go on ballot. And officials take an oath and the town clerk squares them in. What the, what the town clerk also does is take the minutes at the town meetings. And the minutes are the official notes taken at the meeting. Defeated votes mean more votes were against it than before. And carry votes means the people voted for something and it is accepted. The 
town clerk also creates ballots for elections and handing, handling mail-in ballots. There are four elections this year, specifics on a later slide, and she's been busy last year preparing for elections this year. Um, hello, and I will be talking about the school t school committee today. So first, they serve approxim um, they serving they survey approximately 1,430 st st students. Fi um, there are five members of the board: Nancy Stanson Cross, Melissa Pacheco, Gloria Calabra Cabral, Antonio Viveris and Evan Gendra. Um, there, there is an odd number of members, so there isn't a tie. They also work um, on subcommittees to, com co to complete a specific task. Our class had an had in-person interview with Mr. Viveris in February to learn more about the role of school committee. Um, it, is a, it is a volunteer position. Um, it is also an elected position which has a three-year term and there is no term limits. Um, they meet every two weeks and student councils, um, parents can take part in town meeting. Parents and people, p p parents and townspeople. School committee are the eyes and ears of superintendent and school committee. Um, they, the, go the governing board of the school district. Um, the power comes from the state. They set policy. Um, they make the school budget. They hire superintendent, um, Mr. Thomas Aubin. Um, powers are given by the Massachusetts state constitution. They set policies or rules and laws such as the cell phone policy. Um, they do school budgets, um, which they work with town officials, such as the finance committee. They use about 54% of the town's budget. Um, once the town meeting sets a budget, the school committee can spend it as they see fit. Um, and they um, hire superintendent, Mr. Rob Aubin. Um, th um, thank you to the town who got our new middle school built, middle slash high school built. Please take a moment to read the uh, quote on the board, please. So we interviewed Mr. Beer, uh, the chair of the select board earlier this year. The select board serves as the chief executive of the town government, where Richard Beer and the chair, Steve Owlet, Owlet, yeah, Willet, all right, Manuel Soros, the clerk, and Boxler, and Shauna Sufflet. Say names. Uh, say names if you are in the audience. Please give a wave. If you're not, don't worry. <laughs> All right. Um, so subcommittees can work on different tasks, uh, such as the budget. Do not have more uh, concerning matters. Um, they are elected. It's an elected position. It's uh, three years. Uh, the role involves reading a lot of material. Uh, having a lot of material, including uh, knowing a lot of state law. Uh, so the budgets, taxes, and finance issues, uh, the public meeting, public events, speeches, emails, uh, the public, there's meetings every other week and also held meetings with town officials.
A town meeting is an assembly of local qualified voters who meet to discuss and vote on important community topics. On the national level, we have a representative democracy. We elect our representatives, representatives to the House of Representatives and the Senate who vote on the laws on the people of their state's behalf. There is a middleman involved. It is different on the local level in Westport, where citizens have the right to speak, engage in discussion, ask questions, and vote on issues directly at an open town meeting. Here are some interesting facts about Westport history. Town meetings have been held in New England for over 300 years. In 1774, Westport Town Meetings decided to boycott tea during the American Revolution days. Between 1861 and 1865, Westport sent <laughs> 267 seven soldiers to the Civil War from Westport. Hello everyone. Um, right now we are going to ask you to take part in a little scavenger hunt. In a moment we will dismiss you to the cafeteria using those doors. On your way out, please grab a clipboard with a scavenger hunt and a pen. As you walk through the cafeteria, please look at posters created by these 8th grade students to learn more about Westport. Make sure you find as many points as you can. Thank you. Hello, excuse me. Um, so yes, eighth graders, please go man your stations, your poster boards in the cafeteria. Audience members, yes, as Andrew said, if you exit through that door, students are going to hand you a scavenger hunt, pens on a clipboard. You'll go down this hallway on the high school side to enter the cafeteria. You'll walk through the cafeteria. The poster boards will be on both sides. You can walk around, chat with the students. I'm thinking about 10 minutes, 10 minutes in the cafeteria. Um, you, you're trying to answer these questions um, after speaking with students. You'll come around through the cafeteria and you'll enter back in the auditorium through these doors. Okay? Have fun! Okay, welcome back. We're going to continue our presentation. Trent Souza. You're up. Here are some of the decisions made at past Westport Town meetings. In 1917, Westport sent 185 men to World War I. In 2018, new Westport police station was built, costing $8, billion, $8 million, and in 2021, a, the new Westport Middle School that we are in right now was built, and it costed $97 million. Dr. Stephen Forrest is our town moderator. Town moderator is a key role at town meetings. Dr. Forrest has been our town moderator for over 23 years now. As we said earlier, the select board calls for a town meeting, but the town moderator runs the meeting. The town moderator serves three year terms and he cannot have any, he has to have neutral and fair um, opinions. He cannot be favoring a specific idea or a specific person. Um, the town moderator goes over rules at the start of the town meeting and he appoints members of the finance committee to look into areas where spending is needed. He also declares outcomes of vo votes.
Uh, I'm Toby, and uh, I'm going to be talking about powers and responsibilities of town meeting. So we have town meeting decides three major things. It sets the salaries for the elected officials. It votes to appropriate money to run the town. And it votes on the town's local statutes, which are called bylaws. An example of a general bylaw would be setting the hours allowed to walk a dog at the beach. Who gets what? $50 million is Westport's town budget. Another one of Westport's town meeting responsibilities is deciding what is to be done with disposing of town property, such as town meeting had to decide what would be done with the old high school. Hey, I'm Avery, and a warrant is the agenda for the town meeting, a list of items to be discussed. Uh, how is a topic put on the town meeting warrant? Uh, you participate in town meeting, and they put together the articles for the meeting, and they sit on stage and field questions that town moderator directs to them. Over there, no one there, but... <laughs> the warrant needs to be made public one week before the annual town meeting. The selectmen produce the town meeting warrant so that townspeople know what topics will be covered at the meeting, and it has to be produced two weeks before a special town meeting. The specific items on the warrant or agenda are called articles. Ten signatures are needed to add a topic to the town meeting warrant. 200, 200 signatures are needed for a special town meeting to take place. Voting at town meeting. Um, since town meeting is the legislative branch in town, the town voters function like a member of Congress. How to speak at town meeting. If you would like to speak at town meeting, stand up and walk to the mic. Wait to be acknowledged by the moderator. State your name and make your comments to the moderator. He will help direct your question to the right town meeting member. Here are some things not to say during town meeting. <laughs> For example, do not say, I have something to say to the town meeting, or Mr. Smith, you said something as a town meeting member that I want to respond to. Instead, say something like, Mr. Moderator, these are my thoughts on this article. I would now like to welcome Dr. Stephen Fors. Well, first off, thanks very much for inviting me here um, to this, and what a fabulous job by everybody involved. Um, I was been reminded of a lot of things that I already knew, but that's a good thing. And I learned several things tonight between your presentation and the posters out there that I didn't know. So thank you very much for that. Um, <laughs> oh, 
but you've kind of created a problem for me. And what am I supposed to say about town meeting that you guys didn't already do such a great job of saying? But I would like to just emphasize a couple of things. Um, you know, one, you had a slide about the three levels of government, that there's the federal, national level government, there's a state government, and there's a local government. The government that has the most impact on your life by far is the local government. It's a local government that plows your streets. It's a local government that sees to it that your fire is put out if your house catches on fire, that the police deal with, uh, with public safety issues, and so on. Local government affects your life far more than, far more than national government and a whole lot more than, um, than state government as well. And you get the opportunity to participate that, in that if you come to, if you are registered to vote and you come to town meeting. Um, so there's some really wonderful things about town meeting, you know, that it's the direct democracy that you get to um, stand up and speak on issues. Um, and <laughs> Hang on, I wrote myself some notes and I'm getting to the age where I, st where I start to need them. Oh gosh, I apologize for this. So, the great thing, you, you, get to, you get to stand up and speak. You get to, to address the issues yourself. Government at the other levels, state and federal government both, um, I think most of us realize are heavily polarized stuff, especially at the national level. People tend to be in one camp or they're in another camp. Nobody knows what party you're affiliated with at town meeting. There, 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 are, no, there, there are no party affiliations. It's nonpartisan. Another big difference between local town meeting government and, and governments at higher levels, representative governments, is that I think most of us feel, if not distrustful, at least somewhat alienated from those other levels of government because I, I, I'm fortunate, I, I, I know our, our state level reps. I don't personally know our national level reps. Um, but when you come to town meeting, it's people that, if you don't know them, once you see them at town meeting, you're gonna start bumping into them at the market. They're, they're people, they're your, they're your neighbors. Um, and so that, that alienation, that feeling that, you know, this is being imposed on me by some other person that I don't know or, or trust, some of that gets eliminated because you get to see people face to face and you get to see that there are also other human beings and that it is possible for two human beings of good intent to have strong disagreement. And that's okay. They can still leave, shake hands, and be neighbors after that. And that is a beautiful thing about town meeting. Now, to be fair, there's some downsides to town meeting as well. Um, I'm a big fan of a quote attributed to um, Winston Churchill that goes, Democracy is the worst form of government, except for all the other ones that have been tried. And you see that at town meeting, because town meeting is often slow, it's often boring, although there, there are moments when someone gets up and speaks and just cuts to the heart of a point so brilliantly, I want to clap, even though it's not appropriate for me to do that. So it, it's slow, it, it's sometimes boring, that, that, First year that I was moderator, um, it was not a tradition to have limits on the amount of time people spoke, and the town meeting went for six, three and a half hour nights. Um, now it's rare that we do two nights, um, although I think this year we will because we've got some hot topics on the, uh, on the, the warrant. Um, uh, so, <laughs> gosh, I apologize again. I've, let me see my notes here. There was another couple of things I wanted to say. Oh, but, and, and, and the other, um, Ms. Stanton Cross mentioned that town meeting is sometimes intimidating to people because there are rules. But the reason there are rules at town meeting, have you ever tried to get four people to decide to go out to dinner or a movie and look at how long it takes and how complicated it is to make that simple decision with four people? 
So when we have a town meeting, we've got several hundred people who are going to try to make pretty significant decisions about, I think this year the warrant has 45 articles or agenda items on it. So the, the rules are all about getting through that business and, and identifying, the principle of town meeting is, is that we're trying to identify the will of the majority. What does the majority want while still respecting the minority? So the people who don't agree with that majority position still get a chance to, to speak their mind. So we have rules that are strict. And the, the, the people who sat through the six night town meeting my first year, when we started imposing some of the rules, um, everybody felt, OK, yeah, maybe the rules were a little restricted, but God, it sure beats sitting here for six nights. Um, so, and as a result of, of some rules, we um, get things done in a night or two. And the rules, even though there are a whole bunch of them, and it's my job to know all the ins and outs of all that stuff, they all boil down to just a couple of things, which is that we're polite. We don't call each other names. We're, we're polite. We speak when it's our turn. We don't speak over other people. Um, and um, nobody gets a, an unfair advantage. Um, so it's my job to make sure that, that it's all fair. Um, and we only deal with one thing at a time, which is one of the most important things. Um, about town meeting is that we, we deal with one topic and that's the only thing we talk about. So sometimes people get frustrated when they're saying something and I say, I'm sorry, but what we're discussing right now is this and you're talking about that. So I need to bring you back to this or you're gonna have to sit down and stop. So anyway, uh, the rules, there are, there are a bunch of them, but they boil down to those simple things. They allow us to get through a lot of complicated business um, in a reasonable amount of time in, in a night. Um, so thanks again for listening to me, and I hope that I see some of you at town meeting. I, oh, the, the, the one other thing about the rules is, if you break the rules, there's no penalty. <laughs> you know, well, although state law actually allows me to have the police take you and confine you in some other place until the town meeting is over, but that has never happened in Westport. I communicate with moderators all of the state. It has never happened anywhere that I am aware of, and it would only happen if someone insisted on standing up, yelling foul language after four warnings. So anyway, the, the, the normal penalty for breaking the rules is being told that, as I, the example I just said, I'm sorry, but what we're talking about right now is shall we or shall we not appropriate $50,000 for a new cruiser for the police department? If you're talking about whether we should spend money on a playground, I'm sorry, but that's not what we're doing. We have to come back here. So anyway, the, the, I, I hope it's my job to make town meeting less intimidating. Um, and I recognize that, that I have had some limited success at that. Um, but anyway, I, I hope you come to town meeting. Um, I will try to make it less intimidating for you. And um, it's your town. It's where you decide how the money gets spent. It's where you decide how you can use and can't use your land. It's how you decide whether you can walk your dogs on the beach. Um, by this time, decide whether you want sewer and water going down Route 6. A whole lot of very important things. So again, thanks for your attention, and great, great, great job by all of you. Twenty percent, uh, twenty and a half uh, people only showed up to the special town election, right there. Uh, only thirteen percent of residents only showed up to the normal town election during April eleventh. Out of thirteen thousand four hundred fifty-one active registered voters in the town of Westport, only two thousand seven hundred sixty-two showed up to vote. Set a reminder for the upcoming town meeting Tuesday, May 7, 2024 at 7 p.m. 
here in this auditorium. Every town meeting in Massachusetts must take place before June 30th, which marks the end of the fiscal year. The budget is set from July 1st to July 30th. Westport town meeting happens first Tuesday of May. It's once a year, so make sure you come. Um, here are some more upcoming elections. The annual town election on Tuesday, April 9th. State primary, Tuesday, September 3rd, and presidential election, Tuesday, November 5th. Uh, which role do these people hold in our local, state, and national government? If you know the answer, you can shout it out. We're being <laughs> <laughs> so we have James Hartnett. You want to know this one? What's his role in Town administrator. Ed Markey. Senator. Yep, Senator. Dr. Stephen Forrest. He was just here. Yep, town moderator. Paul Schmid. State representative. We have the school committee and. Wait, you were supposed to say they're mean. Yep. And Elizabeth Warren. No, Senator. Next slide. Maura Healy, Mass Governor. Kristen Simpson, Town Clerk. Mr. Soares. These five people right there. <laughs> Select board. All right. Um, Bill Keating. U.S. House of Representatives, Michael Rodericks, State Senator, and Karen Rouse. Yep, Finance Committee. Uh, thanks. <laughs> it is time to test your knowledge. Okay, so first question: True or false? At town meetings, a citizen should direct their not their comment or question to the town administrator. False. All questions or comments must be directed to the town <coughs> moderator during a town meeting. Town moderator. All right, second question. True or false? 
The town clerk's office conducts the annual town census, registers voters, and conducts all local, state, and federal elections. All right. The answer is true. Third question. Civic engagement includes volunteering, voting, running for political office, contacting officials, community service, and fundraising. True. All right, last question. Okay, two more then. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. True or false? The preamble is the agenda for the town meeting, which is a list of items debated by the town moderator and the school committee. Mm. All right, false. A warrant is the agenda issued by the school the select board, which is a list of topics called articles to be discussed and voted on at town meeting. Now the final question. Westport's annual town meeting will be held here on Tuesday, May 7th at 7 o'clock p.m. True. As a reward for doing well at your check-in, gra check grab a chocolate on your way out. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> what? Okay. Thank you for attending the 8th grade Civic Showcase. We hope you learned a little something, and we hope to see you at the, the next election. Good night!